A California man said he has the solution to California's marijuana problems. Legalize it. Stop huffing and puffing about all the dispensaries. Just make it legal for everyone. And he says he's got enough signatures to put his pot prop on the ballot. You're drinking water well. You may not want to drink it. One Southern California city has the second dirtiest tap water in the country. You might want to put a filter on that. Clouds and fog never sounded so good. Get ready to sing along with a filter choir cast. We're starting tonight with one of the most talked about stories of the day, and it involves Senator Barbara Boxer. During a hearing last year, she corrected or scolded a brigadier general. A Chuck DeVore who plans on running against her next year put together this ad in an attempt to raise money for his campaign. The backdrop is one of the Austin Powers movies. Mr. Evil. Dr. Evil, I didn't spend six years in evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank you very much. Ma'am, at the uh, LACPR is it? I you know, do me a favor. Could you say Senator instead of ma'am? <laughs> yes, it's sir. just a thing. I worked so hard to get that title, so I'd appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Yes, Senator. <laughs> Well, as far as the spot goes, funny idea. Our contributors tonight, executive editor of RedCounty.org, Matt Cunningham, and director of social ethics, Charlotte Laws. And Charlotte, I'm going to start with you. A, should the senator have corrected the brigadier general? And B, should it be used against her in a campaign ad? Well, first of all, why is Barbara Boxer speaking out? Aren't women supposed to stay in their place? <laughs> I think that the voters do not care, are not going to care about this particular issue. I think she was a little bit overly sensitive because the general was addressing the male senators, sir, and the female, ma'am. So they weren't treating her any differently. On the other hand, I understand how she feels because women are frequently the target of sexism. Yeah, and but I, Charlotte, Charlotte, you just pointed out in this case she was not the target of sexism. I know, I know. But I'm just saying that I don't think it's a big issue. The voters aren't going to care about it. And I, I can't understand because I'm a woman and because I have been the target myself. And the predominant number of people that vote are females. More females vote than males. So I think that women are going to be very forgiving in this particular case. What do you think, Matt? I think it showed a, a lack of class on Senator Boxer's part. The general wasn't dissing her. He's using a, a term of respect, ma'am, or maybe it's not the one she preferred, but it diminished her by coming out and seeing petty and self-centered. She didn't have to do it that way. She could have found, if it was really that objectionable, she could have found a different way to let the general know that she wanted to be addressed as senator. I don't think it, it's not a decisive issue in the election, but it, what it does, it hurts her in the sense that it, it emphasizes a boxer negative, which is that she's not a likable person. She comes across as grating and, and as a, a sharpie, as petty. So it, and it helps Devor and Fiorina raise money and rally the base. So it's, it's a small negative, but it's a negative for her nonetheless. Yeah, I think the thing here, Charlotte and Matt, I think you make a good point. If the Brigadier General had been addressing the men as Senator and Barbara Boxer as ma'am, maybe she's got a point. Maybe she was a little overly sensitive. But it does speak, and Matt makes a point, it does speak to the way she relates to people and the public. It'll be interesting to see that election next year. Okay. Now, here's something that could change the way that uh, companies deal with employees and your privacy. If you're given a wireless phone at work, should your employer have the right to monitor your text messages? The Supreme Court's going to decide this. Now, the case comes from Ontario. The police chief there got copies of text messages some officers were sending. Some were sexually explicit. The officers sued. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals found in the officers uh, ruled in the officers' favor that the city had violated their rights under the Fourth Amendment. They had a reasonable expectation of privacy. The city appealed, and now the Supreme Court will rule. Here's the issue. If a company gives you a, a computer or a cell phone, should they have the right to monitor your communications or should you be allowed your privacy, Matt? Absolutely, you should be able to monitor your communications. If, say, you're using the phone at somebody else's house, would you expect them not to look at their phone records and monitor and object to some of the phone calls you're making? You're using somebody else's property on somebody else's time, and they have every right to monitor it, especially when it involves a public agency like law enforcement. We had a, a case here in Orange County recently at the beginning of the year where at a board of supervisors meetings, high-ranking Orange County Sheriff's Department officers were using their, uh, their Blackberries to send derisive and dismissive text messages about the supervisors 
uh, to each other and about what they're going to do later and how they wanted to poke their eyes out because the supervisor is so boring. And these are public communications and they're subject to Public Records Act requests. And if we allow public employees to have some kind of zone of privacy when they're using it, it's it's an invitation to abuse. And I think it should be stopped. Charlotte? I totally disagree with you. I think this is a breach of the Fourth Amendment. I think that the officers did have an expectation of privacy. And in this particular case, they had signed an agreement with regards to internet usage and emails, but they had not signed anything with regards to a pager or any other kind of electronic device. And they had been told that if they went over 25,000 characters in their texting, that they would have to pay for it themselves, which they did. The plaintiff in this case paid out of his own pocket. So he had a belief that this was going to be used for personal use. And if I were the Supreme Court, I would rule that unless there was some sort of a contract between the employee and the employer, that there was an expectation, there should be an expectation of privacy for that employee. employee. And that can always be negotiated. If the employee five years into the job says, I want to use my cell phone for personal usage and I'm going to, you know, and that's part of our contract. I want to renegotiate my contract and I don't want you monitoring it. I think that would be perfectly acceptable, but it needs to be in writing. Sexting, of course, has become a huge thing. 39% of teenagers have done it at some point in their life. And even the American Bar Association has classes for marital attorneys on how sexting works in order to better prove their cases. So it's a big thing and it's a new area of law. And I agree with the plaintiffs in this case. All right. Well, the Supreme Court will certainly rule on this. Let's move on.